It's nothing new in the Nut and Fancy project, dudes. It's been going on ever since I had about, I don't know, 80 videos or so. I'm talking about solicitations for gear reviews by the manufacturers to me, Nut and Fancy. And I will tell you, every month that goes by, I get more and more. Hundreds upon hundreds roll in each year from great manufacturers. These are good guys and gals, not just in the U.S., all over the world. Hey, Nut and Fancy, we love your show. We watch it. We love the vids. We got such and such product. It will change the world. Okay, maybe they don't say that, but they're very excited about it, and they want me to be excited about it as well. We'll send you as many as you wish. Uh, is there any chance we can get some airtime? What do you guys think the percentage is of those requests that I actually review? Huh? TMPers that have been following me for some time know how I work, and they will say, probably very slim. And you're right. It is very rare indeed any of those get airtime. Um, there's a couple reasons for this. I'll try to make this brief. I'll get to the details of the knife here in just a second, but it kind of plays into this particular knife. That's why I'm introing with it. Uh, one is that I just don't have a lot of time. I don't even have time to answer the emails. My hardworking secretary, Verilinus, doesn't either. Most of them go unanswered. Not that we wouldn't want to. We're just swamped, guys. That's all it is. I mean, it's a two-person show when it gets right down to it. It's me and Very running the Nut and Fancy Project. Okay? Um, here's the most important reason, though. If I don't dig the item, it doesn't get airtime. Okay? You cannot buy nothing fancy airtime. You can't bribe it. You can't say, hey, I'll send you this. I'll give you that. You know, I'll put your page on, the, on my website. I've had offers like that. We'll get you more subscribers if we do that and get you more exposure. And I answer very politely, not interested, don't need it. You know, I'll generate my own publicity with my own views or with my own viewers. It'll come naturally. Yep, you didn't know that was going on, did you? It happens all the time. All kinds of offers. Most of them are really genuine and straight up. They they are generally excited, are genuinely excited about their product. They know that I'm high integrity. I can't be bought. They know that, and they know I may slam their product. <laughs> You guys have seen me. You see me at SHOT Show. I mean, I will say something right there on camera. If it sucks, I'm going to say it. I don't care who it is. I don't care how big or little the manufacturer is. If there's something that I think is, I don't know, that could be improved, I'll say so. Welcome to the heart and soul of TMP, man. That and, and I have to feel the item. I personally, as a consumer, have to be on board with that item. If I'm not on board, you will not get airtime, generally speaking. Generally speaking, I mean, I might do a review, a negative review on something that I wish to warn you about. I always reserve the right to do that. To do that, but you know, generally when I do a nut and fancy tabletop, I'm stoked about it. Now we get into this blade. Welcome to the Combative Edge M1. Tried to deploy it a little while ago until he smacked into the tripod. This is a cool folding tactical blade. It's worthy of your consideration. It comes out from left field. Nothing fancy. We thought you only like Benchmade, Kershaw, Cold Steel, the big names. Not so. What I like are cool blades. I really don't care where they come from. If they're squared away and they have something to offer me in my systems, my POUs, I think that it represents decent value levels. You know, I might give it a review. There's so much that falls into that category. And I'm talking like mounds of knives and flashlights that I just don't have time for. So I just kind of pick and choose. I do the best I can with the time I have. This is one of those items. Mm -hmm. How did you find out about it then, Nut and Fancy? Did they contact you? Um, no, not really. It kind of entered the Nut and Fancy project in an unexpected way. And that was clipped to Officer Jared's pocket. Yep. You've seen OJ and some nut and fancy running guns. He's so busy, it's hard to have him come out to many of them. He's usually teaching people how to beat, beat each other up overseas. That's what he does. Um, and no, OJ didn't push the knife on me. He wasn't like, hey man, you know, you can you review this? I, I will tell you, if I ever sense that, it's an automatic turn off. I don't care who the person is. If it's one of my crew members, they get, hey man, I got this for you and that for you. And it has happened to people who remain unnamed who do, do this. I, I shut it down. I'm like, no, uh-uh. I gatekeep TMP very strictly. You know, just someone's knocking on the door, great. Not interested. If they knock louder, then the door's really locked tightly. <laughs> That's the way I roll, man. 
Sorry if I offend you with that, but it's high integrity, man. I asked OJ to check the blade out. I was like, let me see that. You know, you saw it in a trench warfare run. I looked at it, and within about 20 seconds, I could tell that the design had merit. And I'm going to go over the details right now. Let's get into it, man. Combative Edge M1 brought to the world by a dude named Rob Walker. Yep, he's OJ's buddy, I guess. They go back. But you know what? As a gear reviewer, I don't care. I can't care. I concentrate on this. Is it worthwhile? POU, and I love this, it's a fighting knife. Designed from the ground up to be a folding fighting knife. A tactical defensive blade. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. I've talked about it in review so many times. The M1 is pure and simple. Designed to defend your life with. Okay? And be a compact and portable weapon. In my opinion, it's way too big to EDC. Talking everyday carry, utility blade. Maybe you should just bring your Twitch 2 with you. Previously reviewed. Highly recommended in the Nut and Fancy Project. Yep, love that blade. Something small, compact, you can bring along. This blade's too big, three and three quarter inches. Uh, again, some guys like the large blades. They're like, hey, I have no problem, you know, you having a utility knife. Understood. To me, it's a fighting knife, plain and simple. Uh, Rob Walker, in talking with him, he says he designed it. Actually, I'm kind of jumping all over ergonomics, maybe. To be comfortable in hand, forward re forward grip, and then reverse grip as well. And they have a style, I guess, they fight with. I'm not really familiar with uh, um, his style. I've talked to Rob on the phone, by the way, extensively. I uh, haven't met him in person, though. Okay, so POU, crank along. Tactical blade. Deal with it if you don't like it. It's a big knife. Uh, let me say this. It's a bigger knife. By way of comparison, let's roll in something we haven't seen for a while. How about the Lone Wolf Harzi T2? Oh, so sad that Lone Wolf is not its own entity anymore. It's been bought out by Benchmade. They have some very Harzy-like blades coming out. Look at this blade. How cool is that? Previously reviewed. Man, I love the T2s. Just so cool. Okay, so there's a size comparison. Here comes a Cold Steel Recon 1 for size comparison. And the Recon 1's a big blade. You can see the Combative Edge M1's bigger, sti bigger still. Can't speak. All right? Look how broad that blade is. Okay, one reason it's getting airtime, and that's why I introed like I did, is there's so many things that are right in the M1. And this is the initial M1. I think Rob is going to come out with some other versions as time goes by. Um, we got to talk about it, though, the weight. It's okay. It's not great. 5.3 ounces. I think the main reason for that is it is a titanium frame lock. We'll look at that here in a second. But that's a thick blade. Four millimeter thick N690 cobalt vanadium steel. Right there, bro. And that's why I think it's so heavy. It's a thick blade. In my opinion, it's too thick. Sorry, Rob. It is. I would like to see it a little bit thinner. You know, maybe three millimeters. But, you know, I don't know. They want some strength out of it. And they're probably going to get it with it. But... It's not a super light blade. The other blades I'm showing you are going to be lighter. The Cold Steel Recon 1 is 5.2, slightly lighter. That T2, Harzy T2 is 4.2. Okay, so that's a full ounce lighter. Nothing fancy, always about the weight. Yeah, pretty much, depending on uh, what the knife is in the POU. The steel is actually pretty awesome. I like the steel. N690, to me, is very uh, VG10-like. Uh, did some cutting tests with this. That's why the, the blade is so thumped. See that? Uh, went out and cut up a huge old cardboard box. It's a boring test, but man, is it a good test for edge retention. Uh, and just like I found in the Wilson Combat EDC, that is the, our ELC, Extreme Light Carry, uh, it maintains an edge surprisingly well. And more importantly, it touches up readily with just some minor sharpening. I used a you know medium ceramic rod. Okay, you can use your sharp maker, whatever you use, all kinds of systems. Freehand is what I did, and the edge came back very nicely. Uh, like I talked to you about in the Spyderco Hawesome series, it's very rust resistant. Uh, I'm still learning about the steel, but it's all looking good. Is it as good as all the other, I don't know, American, maybe some Japanese steels? I don't know. I think most users would be very pleased with N690. 
By the way, this knife is made uh, over there in Italy by Fox. Okay, for uh, Combative Edge. And like we saw in the Wilson Combat ELC, their fit and finish is pretty much rocking. Same in this blade as well. Uh, no problem with the steel at all. Blade shape is pretty cool. Uh, I generally am not a super fan of the organic curvatures like you're seeing here. The intent, again, on this first edition of the M1 is a fighting blade, right? And that curvature kind of feeds material into the cut. Maybe accelerates the cut a little bit. That is a good thing. It's got a fairly strong tip to it. Unsharpened, uh, swooping swedge. I don't know why I said swooping. That's stupid. Um, I think it's a very good looking knife. I generally like the flat ground. You know that. I'm not surprising anybody by that. And I like drop points. Huh. Kind of like the T2 Harzi. Okay. Rob, when you come out with this blade in that knife and you have about that thickness to it on the T2, um, you're going to sell a lot of them. Now, I'm not saying this is bad blade shape. I think the blade shape is excellent, especially for what you're intending the knife to be. A fighting blade, I think it's cool. It's super strong. Again, the thickness, uh, good strength, good belly. I think it's a good stabbing knife. And by the way, I tested that in cardboard. It stabbed great. Testing that lock mechanism. I'll get to that in durability. Love the T2. So if you blend these two knives, make that blade in there. Oh, 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 oh man. Sick. Here's another thing I really love about the Combative Edge M1. Okay. The speed. Two ways to deploy it. Look at the thumb stud. Come on, camera, focus, focus, focus. Here we go. The thumb stud is well done. No volcano issues. What do I mean by that? Oh, you guys have been watching my reviews. You know. Does it have any traction is issues with your thumb? Can you get a good purchase on it? Like so. It's not occluded by the handle. Look how it's sticking out. It's ambidextrous, both sides. Yeah, it comes out fast. But wait, there's more. It's a flipper design as well. Okay, so you have your choice of how, obviously, to deploy the blade. I got to do that off camera so I don't smack into my recording gear. Wicked fast, actually. Well-balanced knife. Let's see if we can see inside. Where's my Prion too? Come on, Prion. This camera's not focusing so well. Let's see. I don't know. Take my word. There, you might see glints of it. Phosphor bronze bushings, or as I've said before, phosphor bronze bushings. <laughs> Stupid. Lockup is tight. I was interested how tight it would be after the extensive cardboarding uh, that I did with the blade. Uh, especially the stabbing, because I really put a lot of layers together and just like sinking this blade in, really thumping on it. I mean, I was not holding back. I wanted to see this. I'm always curious to see if the frame locks are going to perform better than the other locking mechanisms. The axis locks, Blackie Collins bolt lock, liner locks, you know, all that. Um, I will say this, upon doing that, the blade did loosen a little bit. The pivot did. I was a little bit worried because I've kind of traveled down that road before with some other blades. Kind of shake my head like, oh, please let this time back up. Uh, it's such a cool knife. I really don't want to have to tell my viewers how it sucks. Well, guess what? It tightened right back up. It was just the pivot screw right here that came loose. I tightened it back up and now no movement. Up, down, side to side. Tight as, I don't know, whatever you want. Insert reference here. It's a really tight blade. Uh, well balanced, super high quality. Love the lockup and the strength. Apparently, it's pretty high. One thing you're not going to get with M1, however, is a steel insert on the locking bar that we see with some other designs. We saw that in the 2011 Shot Show vid uh, Spider Code. They're going to put that on the new Titanium Military. Um, I like that. I think it's cool. We saw that also with some Kershaw designs in their booth review. I don't think it's a showstopper, uh, really, with the design. I'm talking about having steel here instead of titanium. Um, but then again, I'm still learning. Okay, this is a snapshot in time. You know, if you use this knife a lot, you know, through the years, you're going to wear down your titanium against the steel. I don't know. That would probably take a long time to find that out. You know, uh, it just depends. I think the strength from what I've seen in my own tests, pretty smoking. Check this out. Speaking of smoking, look how thin the knife is. Okay, this is another thing that Rob wanted to do with the blade and talking with him. Make it thin and easy to carry. Huh, there we go again with the firepower versus mobility thesis I put out there two years ago. Meaning that if you have something that's comfortable 
to carry, you're probably going to carry it. And I think thickness is a very important attribute for a carry knife, yes, even a tactical blade. Now you could say, jump into ergonomics, hey, nothing fancy, you know, with a tactical blade, you've talked about in other reviews, which is true, how it's so important to have a traction plan. And sometimes thickness, that is width on the handle, is an important part of that formula, right? All true, all true. Uh, let's go back to the Cold Steel Recon 1. This is a good example. High traction G10, well-formed choils, finger grooves. I mean, this sucker locks in. Yes, I slammed some skateboard tape up there because it needed it bad. Okay, I don't know why they didn't jump that. Side track. But this is a good tactical blade. It feels good in hand. It's really nice thickness. Uh, I'm talking like it strikes a balance well. Uh, when we talk about firepower versus mobility, we might have to sacrifice maybe some of that hand-filling comfort, maybe traction, to get something that's more portable. Welcome to the world of Combative Edge M1, because that's what's being done. So you may not have you know, that ultimate hand-filling grip, but jump into ergos, you're going to have some really cool stuff. Another reason I'm stoked about the blade. Huh, what do you think I'm going to say next? Camera silence. Jumping, and check this out. It is really well done, both on the frame and on the blade. It's sharp, very purposeful. Can't speak purposeful jumping. Huh, love it, especially in the tactical POU. Deep finger choil right there, finger guard right here. Okay, so while you may not have the thickness, okay, it's going to be easier, more comfortable to carry. You definitely have it right here. And that was the design of the M1. Locks in your hand very solid, solidly. And this G10 is every bit as good as the stuff that I just showed you on the new version of the Cold Steel Recon 1. Still an outstanding blade. High traction, baby. Um, and, oh, I love this. Okay, it just there's so many points. I'm not lying to you guys. Check this out. They avoided putting liners in the G10. Huh. Maybe someone's been watching that in fancy reviews. And yes, Rob Walker is a TMP -er, Said as much. Welcome to the club, bro. No steel in that G10. Thank you very much. It's not needed. That's a strong frame. In the tactical POU, why do you need steel on the other side? It would just make, th make this like a 7.5 ounce knife. Okay, I don't think titanium is all that light either. It's used in a number of knife designs. And I don't ever think they're super light. Witness, I don't know, Spider Coast Sage. Titanium. Outstanding blade. It's my carry at shot 2011. Uh, love the knife, but they're not super light. I mean, lighter than a lot of materials. I don't know, maybe like stainless steel, the same thickness, no doubt. Big win on the handle, though, don't you think? Good jimping, deep finger groove. And there's some jimping back here, too. And it's sharp. Check this out. Oh, focus that time. Thank heavens. You can see the details of the knife right in there. Titanium lock. Here's a miss. I told Rob this too. See how this is radiused right here? When you put your thumb here, it's actually kind of difficult to disengage the locking bar. And you can see, by the way, how the locking bar uh, mates to the back of the knife tank. I said it'd be kind of nice if that was not radiused right here, just this portion so you can more easily disengage it. He said that they actually looked at that and they went with the current design. Uh, I forget the reasoning behind it, but he said he looked at it. I would still like to see it. Uh, having this radius makes it a little bit difficult. And I, I, you know, I stress a little bit. It's not a showstopper for me to disengage the locking bar. Notice the over-travel stop. Nice attention to detail. Is it as elegant as some of the other ways we've seen not to over-tweak your locking bar? Probably not. You know, there's that disc we saw in the line steel version. There's several other knives that license that and use it. There's some internal ones that Sal Glesser was talking about. There's cool ways to do that. I have no problems with this way either, though. It's nice. Uh, you can't take the knife apart. Zytel backspacer right there. How's the blade centering and retention? Oh, I'm so glad I remembered that. Sometimes I forget that in my reviews. The blade centering is spot on. Look at that. No issues at all, and yes, that's a big slab of steel going in that very slim knife. That should be an attraction for a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys that really like, TMPers I'm talking, guys I've talked to, great dudes, 
you know, and they like that thick slab of steel. They don't trust anything less. Okay, look at the M1. Uh, it's not focusing super great, but perfect centering here. The blade retention could be improved. Uh-huh, sorry. Got to be truthful in my reviews. See how I shake it out like that? Uh, Rob, I'd probably put a better detent in there so it doesn't shake out quite as easily with the following caveat, and it goes something like this. That might be what he wanted, okay, because the cool thing about that is that for a tactical blade, it's really easy to shake it out and get it into action, okay? Um, personally, I would like to see a little bit better retention. That's just me. How's the clip? Uh, pretty much awesome. It's a loop over clip. It carries very deeply. Positionable, at least on this side of the knife. You can't swap it over there, you know, on that side, if that's what you're wanting. Lefties, uh, you may not dig it so much. Uh, you carry tip down, tip up. If you carry tip up configuration, which I have it positioned for right now, you're going to have more of the blade sticking out of the pocket. Uh, the designer, Rob Walker, likes to carry it tip down, he said. Okay, he thinks it's a faster presentation for his own skill set for what he's used to. Okay, so you pick and choose. By the way, this is a paracord lanyard from our friends at paracord.com, Wilson Combat. I actually like the one that ones that PFI is doing that I have them tie that are shorter than this. It's just, I don't know, a little bit too long for me. I recommend using that with your M1 because since it is a slimmer knife, it rides very tight in the pocket, relatively deeply. It's going to help you extract the blade uh, in a fight, especially if you have gloved hands. Good clip. Oh, one thing about the clip. This is kind of, I don't know, a minor issue. It doesn't secure super well because you have a very slick titanium scale. You have a stainless steel pocket clip. Um, there's really no traction on it. I didn't take the clip off and bend it so it had more pressure on it. You can do that. Okay. Little data point there. Durability. I think it's going to be pretty good actually on the M1. Uh, after thumping on it in the cardboard test. I mean, could I do some more extreme tests? Yeah, but why? I think even what I did with cardboard is kind of going above and beyond. I know some guys get into really th basically breaking the knife. I just don't think that's realistic for what you're going to use this knife for. If you want super strength, go with a fixed blade. Something I've always said. All right, uh, durability, good. Uh, we talked about the locking bar and some issues you might have with that. Uh, apparently was an issue for the spider code design, so I think you'll be okay. How about value? Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I think it's an expensive knife. Uh-huh. Uh, look in the upper right, though. I worked a uh, pretty smoking, nothing fancy discount code for you. Uh-huh. Go use that at the uh, CombativeEdge.com website. Score it for less. Uh, I will tell you this, though. It comes from what I think is a small businessman making some pretty cool products. And I'm talking about the M1 here. Uh, I kind of like supporting guys like that, and like I've shown you in the details, this knife is pretty squared away, especially for a first version. Don't you think? Um, will it become collectible? Don't know. Depends. Company goes out of business? Could be. I never buy my knives for collectability. I buy them as users, and first and second type of cool. That's just the way uh, I work it. Oh, by the way, check that out. That would be a very hard hit to receive in non-lethal or <clears throat> less lethal fashion. I'm talking about if the knife is closed and you smack someone in the thigh or somewhere else in a major muscle group with that. Ouch! That would hurt. Uh, expensive knife, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to say the price because that's subject to change. Go on the website. Uh, it's going to it's going to be above 150 though. Even with the, the code, I think... I'm just going to ballpark it. Around 175, 170. Expensive blade. I ain't lying to you. It is. Cool Factor's pretty smoking, though. Go to your next tactical shoot and, you know, you break out your M1. Hey, what knife you got? Uh, bad deployment there. Uh, Combative Edge M1. What? Never heard of that knife. And you go, exactly. <laughs> and score major cool points. I'm kind of kidding around with you, you know. I'm talking second type of cool, but it's kind of cool having a knife that no one else has or very few people have. Um, don't get me wrong, in terms of value, there's a lot of other knives that will beat it. Cold Steel gets it right. I mean, the amount of blade you're going to get in a Cold Steel Recon 1, AK-47. I thought I had that knife on the table. I don't. Uh, maybe even if you can score on the used market, T2 Harzi. I don't know. Pretty cool. Uh, here comes, what knife is this? Lost my note sheet. 
Oh yeah, this is a Bone Collector by Benchmade. I may review it sometime. That's a 150-20 Bone Collector. Oh, by the way, here's size against this. Look at that. The M1 totally dwarfs it. That is hilarious. And this is a big knife. I love how big the blade is. I like the thickness of it. I'm not the thickness, but how wide the blade is because it's just going to shear so well. Okay, value is in the eye of the beholder. How many times have I said that? That's not going to change with a combative edge M1. You know, uh, it's a well-made blade though. From everything I can see, the steel is excellent. The ergonomics are well thought out. They use a high traction G10, high quality titanium frame, great pocket clip. Excellent jimping, good finger choil, two ways to deploy the blade. It's ultra thin. No, it's not the lightest blade out there at 5.3 ounces. In most cases, though, it's a win. If you're getting that, then uh, I'm sending the message clearly. It is a win. The future versions coming out, I think, uh, have potential to be even a bigger win. Oh, kind of like that. Sorry, that's just my mileage. There you go, Combative Edge M1 by Mr. Rob Walker. Outstanding tactical folding knife. See ya.